The sugar detox diet. What the heck do you eat when you're trying to detox from sugar? Would you believe it if I told you it's not what you think? So many people make this mistake and they focus so hard on the diet. Every time someone comes to me, all they want, to, all they want is a diet plan and an exercise plan. You know what's going on there, gang? We've become brainwashed, literally, physically, emotionally brainwashed by the $78 billion diet industry that tells us eat less and exercise more. Eat less and exercise more. You eat nutritiously dense foods and exercise more. Gang, that could be nothing could be further from the truth. And this is the in a decade of doing this and helping people get off sugar, detox, and then stay off sugar, here's what we've discovered. Get your notepad out because it's super, super important. The food has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Write it down. The food has nothing to do with it. It's kind of hard to even believe that if you're going to try and detox from sugar with everything 85% of the food products on the shelf having sugar in it, that food has nothing to do with it. Yes, of course, you have to eat whole food, gang. You've got to eat food that is nutrient dense. And But it doesn't matter if you eat raw food, vegan or carnivore or somewhere in between. You have to eat on the outside of the grocery store. You have to try not to eat bags and boxes and cans and takeouts and things that you don't know that have sugar in them. Now, of course, you've got to eliminate the natural or the uh, the sweets that we know are sweets, the ice creams and the candies and the cakes and stuff. That's part of the process. But as far as the food and the diet plan, as long as you're eating whole food, it really doesn't matter. Now, people are always asking me to name the diet. And I have, I'm coming close to being able to actually specifically name what I believe is the most important uh, type of diet, the way that you should eat, whether it's carnivore or keto or vegetarian or vegan or whatever. But that's not here yet because this is important and you're going to get this in just a second. We've had success on both, on both ends of the spectrum. It doesn't almost matter as long as you leave out foods that have sugar in them, added sugar in them. And we're not even going to get into the fruits. I'm going to do another complete video. Uh, but I can tell you fruit juices and dried fruits are completely out. None of that. Can't have any of that stuff. Why? Because the fructose is the offending molecule. And the fructose molecule doesn't care whether it comes from table sugar or fruit. If you, it's going to keep those cravings alive, all right? Again, a completely another video. What I want to focus on today is I want to make sure that you understand. And here comes the big curveball. Here comes the big switch. Here comes the big reveal. Sugar addiction withdrawals, sugar detox has nothing to do with the food and everything to do with your emotional state the emotional state that you're in and that you were in when you started this habit, probably as a baby. And the science is very clear now and it's coming out over and over and over again. Plus our experience with all our coaches and everything has come to show that the people who understand this uh, concept that comfort eating is real, write that down gang, comfort eating is real. It's always been real. But if you want to make it more scientific and more understand it deeper, the food, the comfort food has tamped down our emotions. We've literally unconscious, now think about this, unconsciously figured out a way to not feel uncomfortable feelings. And we did this starting as babies when our mother helped us do it when we'd be crying instead of getting down on our level 
and giving us a hug and saying, what's wrong, dear? They were busy. They had a life. They had a career. They had other kids. And they would just give you a cookie and point you towards the TV. So literally deep in our limbic brain, we've registered this idea that when we're hurt or worried or fearful or anxious, we go to the food and go to the sugar mostly, cookies. And look, even a child in this day and age can score, yes, it is a druggy term, can score sugar. Um, and really they get to be acclimated that they score it because not because they need a sweet taste on their mouth, but because they really just want to stop. Like they're a little lonely. Mom's not paying attention to them. They're a little upset because dad's been gone so long. And, and they're, they don't know words well, two, three, four, five years old. And this continues through life where, you know, it's just a soda. It's just a cookie. It's just whatever. But in reality, it's been a training ground, gang. Think of it as a training ground for emotional detachment. And what happens when we begin to detox, when we get to change this process, what happens is these emotions begin to well up, whether they're old emotions or new stressors. And what happens is we literally don't have the tools to cope with that. We don't understand how to cope with that. And so until we understand that as we, this is the detox again, as we come off the sugar and put it away and put it down, what we need to do aside from eating whole food is we need to begin inserting other ways to handle either old stuff that we never got closure on or new stuff that is completely like, we're like left bare, raw. We don't understand. We literally have no other way of coping. We didn't build in an exercise plan or a walking plan or a yoga plan, a, an actual self-care plan. And so what we do in a detox is we, we, we separate this unconscious process. We cleave apart this unconscious process and we show you how to substitute holistic, um, natural, we call it effort-based dopamine versus substance-based dopamine. Now, when I say dopamine, I it, it's a constellation of all of the feel goods, meaning oxytocin, serotonin, GABA, norepinephrine, even our adrenals and our um, uh, the endorphins, the things that you know when you're lifting weights, you, you know you get a little flood of natural morphine. Uh, those things are all affected by sugar. And if we don't understand that when we're anxious, when we're fearful, that we've always trained literally not only our limbic, our front, frontal cortex of our brain, but our deep neural, you know, our deep limbic brain, our, our monkey mind, uh, our, our, our uh, lizard brain, to quell those feelings via a substance, via sugar, then we are bound and determined to continue this process because a lot of people can you know, grit and bear it or white knuckle it. They can power through it. They can exercise a lot, which in exercise is a great substitute. And a lot of athletes do well for a period of time. People that had an athletic background, um, they do well because they substitute exercise. And isn't that what the diet people say? But gang, you know, it's a proven fact that um, people that lose any amount of weight always gain it all back in the first year, 95% of the time. So why is that? It's, it's really simple. It's a real simple equation. Every diet worth the paper it's printed on says, uh, quit the white stuff. So everybody naturally restricts sugar maybe not to the degree of 100% detox, but they, you know, the flour, the bread, the pasta, they cut back on it. And then all of a the sudden they're exercising and they're losing weight and they're happy. But what happens? What happens is a, a life situation comes up, a death, a divorce, financial something, something comes up and we don't, we, we, we fall back to this old comfort zone. And we don't think that, well, I'm upset, I'm gonna go have sugar. What happens is, is the event evolves 
or some event come from the past begins to surface where, that we never got closure on. And then what happens is we're just, you know, passing by a 7-Eleven. We stop in almost unconsciously and say, wouldn't it be nice? And you grab, instead of getting gas or when you get gas, you get, the, you get the soda or you get the candy or whatever. And then you're kind of off to the races, right? And I've heard that story hundreds, probably now thousands of times where people, they've got three months, six months or whatever. And they didn't really work this thing that I'm telling you. They didn't begin to understand that they're not, they're not, and it has nothing to do with the sweet tea taste on their mouth or the drink or anything. What it has to do is they are unconsciously reverting back to an old emotions management system that works now or used to, you know, that, that used to work when we were babies. We continued as we were teens and young adults. And, and, the, and most people that come to us are literally in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And for decades, they've used this process unconsciously now, unconsciously, they've used this process to change how they felt and change their state. And now when they let go of the sugar, they need to bring it back. They need to start to change how they self-soothe, how they manage these emotions. Now, gang, I know this could get long. I could go on forever. There are very, very good books written about this. and. Uh, um, I'm trying to write one myself so that people can understand that this process is real and tens of thousands of detoxes and tens of thousands of people who have gone on to not necessarily be completely sugar-free, but to spend uh, six months or a year mastering and understanding why they ate sugar and then cutting back. So gang, I hope it was interesting. Please like share and comment on this so that we can uh, get this message out to lots more people. The weight, the weight byproducts, the health terrible stuff is only a byproduct of this process we use to manage our emotions. I hope that helps gang. Uh, like I said, uh, let some other folks know so that we can get this message out. Very important information. Take care. Bye for now.